Professor Robert Bowker is the father of the hemodynamic flow hypothesis for energy dissipation in the equine foot. Or in plain English, this is the scientist who figured out that the digital cushion in the horse's foot contains tiny blood vessels which make up a kind of hydraulic shock absorption mechanism. When you hear barefoot enthusiasts talk about the equine foot as a pump for blood, they're referring to research started by Professor Bowker in the late 1990s. Although he is a leading authority on the anatomy of the equine foot, Professor Bowker hesitates to describe the perfect trim. I, I have a general recipe for trimming the horse and basically it is if you took a, a sharpie pin and you marked outside the white line with a sharpie pin and then you trim the hoof at 45 degrees with that what you'd be left with is your sharpie marker the black line your white line the sole frog and bars and it's been advocated over a hundred years ago that don't touch the sole frog or bars under any condition and I think this is the beginning of a decent recipe for the foot but the exact perfect trim for a foot is uh, I don't know what it is at this point because all feet are very adaptable and that foot is going to adapt to its environment and what can you say about this foot? Well, uh, we've mostly just been trimming around the other side of the wall and I just try to keep the toe short and the farrier doesn't touch the bottom part of the foot at all. You know, it's, just a, uh, it's not that bad and we're due for another trim and what we'll do is just bevel here and lower, the, lower this uh, heels to the level of the frog. And that's kind of basically all we do. Right? Why do horses go sore when, they're on, when the shoes are taken off? When you put a shoe on, you're desensitizing the foot. So it makes them less sensitive to the ground. And as soon as you uh, remove the shoe, uh, you have uh, the foot that is much more sensitive to the ground surfaces. And so they're just going to be kind of more sensitive to that. It doesn't mean necessarily that increased sensitivity is pain, but it's just an uncomfortable change in sensitivity of the foot, which should take a few days to uh, accommodate to that. What about the horses that remain sore for a long time after you take the shoes off? That can be due to a variety of reasons if they remain sore. And so I would, uh, when you're, to go back to the shoeing, if you remove the shoe, I would not trim the foot at that point. Just uh, uh, take a rasp lightly over the, the peripheral parts of it and see what happens. And if they remain more than four or five days to a week, then perhaps you'd need some sort of a more careful examination of foot. So maybe some sort of bacterial infection or fungal infection. They may be uh, may need to take radiographs and do a more thorough exam of the foot just to see where the problem might be. What can you do to make the horse more comfortable after you take the shoes off? If the horse is very sensitive, there's very of uh, commercial boots you can use. To, uh, you have to protect the foot. Put the horse on some sort of uh, conformable surface. Um, you know, sand, pea rock, deep dirt, or whatever you want to call it. Just some sort of conformable surface as opposed to hard surface. and. Um, allow the horse to adapt to that and see what happens after three, four, five days to a week. So horses shouldn't be sore for months and months and months while they get no, used? No, no. We're talking short periods of time. A few days to a week maximum. And then you should do a very thorough examination to see what the problem is. If it's within the hoof, the solar surface, thin soles, there's a variety, of, there's a lot of reasons for it. The horse can become sore and you just have to eliminate some. So what can you do if, if, if it's because the horse has thin soles, then... Thin soles, you got to, when you ride the horse, uh, there's a lot of recipes and remedies for uh, increasing the thickness of the sole, but I'm not convinced those are the, uh, what will do help, but you have to protect the foot when you, you ride either 
variety of commercial boots, ride them on a conformable surface. Is it natural to have fluctuations in how, in the morphology of the hoof, a healthy hoof? I think there is. I think thin. I think a lot of these uh, uh, foot structures, like the sole thickness and thinness of the sole, is a periodicity to it, and I don't know if it's related to the to the sun or stars or whatever, but you see it periodically in horses and horses that are uh, vary with the the thickness of the sole will vary with the uh, the humidity and as, as well as uh, rain. Uh, the more the more the less rain you have, the the sole of the foot starts to get more flat, more uh, starts to get flatter and more firm and that sort of stuff. And this in the United States and a variety of other places around the world, it's just a normal occurrence and you shouldn't trim that out. It's the, what the hoof is doing to protect itself. This is my wife's horse. We've had him 10 years, thereabouts. And his feet are clean every five weeks, regardless. for another trim and the bars we cut a little bit here and this will bring the heels back a little bit to level here and we'll bevel the toe you know between 10 and 2 just to keep this kind of one-third two-thirds which I think is not a bad thing as a horse owner you can help to monitor your horse's hoof health but first, you have to learn to recognize what's normal. When they examine the foot, you know, do it on a regular basis so you know what normal is for that horse. And you can put your hand on the uh, uh, dorsal surface of the hoof wall and get an idea of what the temperature is. And if you do that enough times, you'll know what normal is for that horse. And if sometimes you feel that it's too warm. Uh, it can be a sign of an abscess or something a little more serious. Uh, on the solar surface, uh, what I would encourage you to do is to look at it and palpate and to see where the frog is and that sort of and actually move, see if you can move the sole in front of the apex of the frog. If you can move the sole with your fingers and you don't have to be a, a, a muscular person, if you can actually move the sole, you have thin soles. And what I try to encourage horse owners is try to take a pulse either uh, at the fetlock or at the uh, knee and by doing that you can get an idea of what the rate is but mostly what you're after is the how the pulse in this quality is if it's a softer pulse it's a normal pulse means that you get a greater perfusion in the foot versus a more bounding pulse. A bounding pulse is more spiky you, uh, it, it, you feel it and it, it feels like a sharp spike and that means you have more resistance inside the foot, and that is not a good sign. So just because you can feel a pulse at the carpet or at the knee, um, it doesn't mean your horse has laminitis. No, it does not mean you have laminitis. The quality of the pulse is, is more important. And if you do it enough times, when you trim the feet, you should feel a change in the quality of the pulse. The rate won't change, but the quality of the pulse should improve become more soft than what it was when you started. Some horse owners jump headfirst into the barefoot transition by learning to trim their own horse's feet. Professor Bowker suggests to err on the side of caution. The owner, if they've had experience in that sort of stuff, they can trim their feet, and we're talking more of a rasp sort of thing, but I would strongly recommend that they only do it in between when you have a professional farrier or a trimmer come. and. Um, and do this in concert with what your fairy or trimmer recommends. Just because you have a pretty foot on the outside uh, doesn't mean you have a very healthy foot on the inside. Because what I want for a healthy foot, I want my horses to have very dense coffin bones. I want them to have a lot of very robust ligaments, and that means that its fibrous ligaments have changed to fiber cartilage. And I want a lot of blood vessels through the frog and through the back part of the foot to help remove the energy. Most of those tissues develop as a result of stimulating the solar parts of the foot. It's not from standing around and that sort of stuff. And it doesn't come with age. It needs, the foot needs to be stimulated, and that's why I believe this front 
part of the frog is very crucial. And by trimming it, neatening it, and removing this tissue here, it decreases the ability of the foot to develop to a good foot internally.